tell me how to live my <laughs> life. Said, don't tell me how to live my <laughs> life. Said, oh, I, I got you control. could I could uh, oh. I could appreciate one team more than the other over time. No clearance. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 131 of the No Clearance Podcast. I am your host, boop, boop. Tyler. No here with the man with the plan 50 grand product producer no of the pod. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Mr. You know, Jay I'm New nickname. West. New nickname. New nickname. What's the nickname today? Smooth talking Jay. Don't Damn, really Scott. flirt. I'm going to get one. I'm going to get one. <laughs> I'm going to get one. Where y'all going to be like, that's fire, Jay. What about like Jay Filet? Am I, what am I, a fish? No, nah, Filet like the Filet. That's already taken. Fair. I'm pretty sure that filet guy's real name is J. It begins with a J. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm like that is true. 45% sure. Hey, big shout out to our Patreons. Please shout out yes. to y'all, man. Shout out to Romario. Shout out to HA. Shout out to Cam Machiavelli, Sam, Angie, and my Miss Rob. Shout out to y'all, man. We appreciate y'all. For those who want to be a part of the Patreon, and you want to get our technically athletic episodes as well as dare to talk episodes a week early, subscribe to our Patreon for five dollars a month. Uh, the latest dollars. technically athletic episode is up, or well, the audio is up, featuring yes. me, my wife. My wife interviewed me for the latest technically athletic episode. Uh, uh, listening back to it, great. Uh, it was a good interview. A good interview. Hey, I, I, it is my, yeah. video up tomorrow. Yeah, I really. Uh, I enjoyed it. I forget. Yo, there's so many things I forgot to talk about. I didn't even bring up the fact that I wrestled in high school. Hey, when you did mine, I forgot mad shit. Yeah. I forgot I wrestled in high school. I forgot I played baseball in middle school. I ain't talking about none of that. But neither was really that important. Also, shout out Coach Murph for the shout out. Hey, hey <laughs> yes. Shout out to Coach Murph. Coach Murph really be tuning in. Like, he really I wonder if he message. listens to the regular show. I I doubt it. I, <laughs> I doubt, probably doubt it. Bruh. I doubt he listened to the regular show. Like once he saw like Saint Asma College, he was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. this is this is it." But yeah. he did say congratulations on the media empire. And what yeah. I tell you, that makes me keep keep wanting to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Like hey, makes me sound get- like a Sith Lord. <laughs> The rule of two. You know they got. You know Sips got the rule of two. Yo, yo, big. It can't facts. be more than two Sips at one time. You know, big facts. Master and apprentice, but I feel like extra we're both large equals. hoodie. <laughs> can't see my face. <laughs> Power. Just know, SCB unlimited show coming soon. Power. Just know. Just know, everybody be, everybody be on the lookout. NC Movie Show coming real NC, soon. NC Movie Show will also be airing on the Patreon yes. early. And um, Check out that Jackie Brown episode. From yes, weeks check ago. out the Jackie. Yeah, big facts, big facts. Oh, and be on the lookout. The Technically Athletic uh, episodes will be getting its own podcast channel soon. Uh, but I'm going to re-edit the previous episodes and uh, just to clean it up take a lot of those ums and long ass pauses off so y'all can speed through you really them notice them after some time you really feel me like you really notice them when yeah you, when so you been, actually I took pay them attention to it you know what i'm saying like I, yeah i took them off for it. the for the last three interviews I, I really cut out a lot of it yeah so and it sounds a lot smoother you know what i'm saying like it's just a good conversation at that point yeah so, um <clears throat> But but it's cool. Like during the interview, it's like, yeah, don't even worry about, like, like yeah. think about your answer. It's cool. We gonna cut yeah, it. Out. Take your time. <laughs> take, take your time. time. I actually just interviewed. Post. I just interviewed Sammy, uh, last week for oh, technically word, athletic. Word, word. Uh, word. It got it got it got it got a little deep near the end, but I hope you know that's gonna come out next month. That's gonna be yeah. exciting. Word word um, word. Okay, Jay, how you been, bro? I'm good, bro. Uh, I just had the weirdest experience at the gym. Okay. And I was nervous because I thought someone else seen it. So I remember I, I recently switched gym bags to my bigger duffel bag, the one I travel with. 
Yeah. Now I say this is the one I travel with. So when I this when I tell you what I found in this bag, <laughs> you're gonna be like, oh, I know what you do when you travel. Right. So I'm in my gym bag today and I pull out my sneakers and a blue chew falls out. Wow. <laughs> and I seen it and I looked at the ground and I looked around. I was like, oh shit, snatch it up, put it in my pocket, <laughs> put it back in my pocket. So now I'm in the gym with a blue chew in my pocket. And the whole time I'm sitting there, I was like, why did I just put this back in the <laughs> why, Right. Why would you put it in your pocket? <laughs> so, oh <laughs> man. So, uh, this is the snow. That's, but that's what I do when I'm on vacation. <laughs> that's, that, that's all. I yo, I've really been meaning to like order blue chew before going on trips and I just yeah. haven't I haven't got like do you, did you actually have to talk to a doctor or you just ordered it's it? It's a it's it's a chat. They what? literally ask you, you have any health conditions? No. Any allergies, any medications? No. All right, be there in five to ten business days. <laughs> All right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. And I only get like five every three months, and I don't use it that often, so that shit started to add up. I'm about to, I'm about to buy a pill bottle to put them in. Yeah. I mean, how often? Do you only use it for vacation? Or like on a good night. And by the way, you need to invest in a suitcase. I have a suitcase. But you use the duffel bag? Yeah, duffel bag for carry-on. Hmm. Or like if we go on a trip where we don't have to fly, I use a duffel bag. I don't use a suitcase. I just I just saw a random story, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to get into the episode, but random story. Two years ago, my mother-in-law was like, my mother-in-law said, what y'all want for Christmas? I thought that meant individually, which what, yeah. do, you, what do each of y'all want? I got up, I was like, I need a suitcase, suitcase. That's That's what I need. I need one of suitcases with the four wheels. You can spin and do all types of, you yeah. know what I'm saying? One That's what I got. Choice. I got a big one. Yeah. So, I, we got a suitcase that Christmas. Right. <laughs> now, it was just one gift, but I could have swore, you know what I'm saying, it was my suitcase. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> But it's y'all suitcase. Yeah, so throughout the year, Drew be like, go ahead, pull out the suitcase so we can put our clothes in it. I'm like, what, you, what what's this we like this is my suitcase fam like i don't know what you thought she was like it's drew's like you do know she bought that suitcase for the both of us right i was like what are you talking about wait i, I asked for the suitcase hey first of all women's clothes are way smaller than men's so we can't share a suitcase yeah it's not possible not, not it's not it possible. has to be a big it has to be a big suitcase to share you wear like, a size 13 shoe that yeah. don't take up a whole <laughs> half of the suitcase <laughs> exactly i don't understand the, the sharing suitcase especially hey. like medium to small size suitcase it just hey. it doesn't work you got a full-time job now with benefits Y'all both each need your own suitcase. So you don't check need this. to worry about checking bag fees no more. So of course the next the next Christmas, she said, What you want for Christmas? I said, She needs a suitcase. <laughs> Did she get a suitcase? She got her own now. She got right, this, worry, this purple yeah, joint. So we good now, but for the longest, I was like, I can't believe she bought a suitcase for both of us. Hey, you that both parties need their own suitcases. Shout out to I my mom. I wanna get one of them sets. Shout out to my mother. Oh, happy Mother's Day. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, uh, yeah. to all the women who have, you know, who we look to raise as mothers. Raise children. To all mm-hmm. the women that raise children. Happy Mother's Day to you all. We truly appreciate y'all. Uh, you know, there's nothing really we can do without the motherly love. and Yeah. Uh, By my honor desk. <laughs> hey, hey, that's a good gift. Yeah, right. Yeah. I bought Drew a desk. It be like that, bro. Man. What'd you get, IQ? Nah, I got Amazon. It was on sale for $77. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Jay, that was the same dress Jay, Jay was going to buy when we first which, uh, set up the office during the pandemic. You know how much it cost back then? 185 Oh. Same exact desk. Dang. It went down $120 <laughs> after the pandemic. <laughs> Yo, they was racing. The hey. They the was, inflation got it, real, bro. Hey. Now, this was three years ago. This was before inflation. These niggas just hiked the prices up because niggas were stuck at home. 
That's what I don't want to talk about. What's, what's on the docket today? All right, man. Yeah, let's get into some topics, man. So, all right, let's go sports first. Okay. Oh, Especially I'm sorry. since KC's not here. Sorry to cut you off. Sorry to cut you off. KC's not here again. I was about to. You was, to oh, you about to dress? Oh, okay, okay. Bruh. <laughs> I was, no, I felt first. bad for saying what's since, in the docket and forgetting about it. Nah, nah, I ain't forget about it. Let's go okay, sports okay. first. Is Casey not here? Big shout out to Casey. She got the official Mav portion of the state standardized testing is tomorrow. Is tomorrow the day that this drops? Yeah, <laughs> the, the test starts. So for the children, one more time, I'm gonna tell you right now. Get together. If you're in. If you in KC's class, excel. Exactly. Everybody else, don't fail. You know what? Everyone else do well so KC can get a raise. Because the whole school good does well. You know, they give this good the schools more money. You know that, right? Here's the this 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 the thing. <laughs> Well, you know what? You know what? KC got uh, some of them teachers at, that work with KC. Where ain't they been on the pod? Ain't they been on there know. to talk? I don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if they work with her or not. You don't know. I was gonna. I was gonna. I'm not gonna even think. All about right. It. So KC and any of the other teachers, I don't know where you work, but I know y'all teachers. Any of y'all that was on there to talk? Oh boy, y'all kids excel. Anybody yeah. related that has any ties with the no clearance media? I hope all your children excel. Everybody yeah. else, just don't fail. Don't fail. Don't Get fail. Proficient. Proficiency is good. Yes. If it's like the if it's like the test out here, they got needs improvement, proficient, <laughs> and advanced. Let's all hope for proficient. Let's pray, pray for proficiency. <laughs> In KC's class, let's get advanced. Let's get it together. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Let them know. Let them All know. right. Now, this episode is brought to you by the good people at No Clearance. All right. Go to noclearancepod.com slash shop. We have merchandise for you to wear. Please support the brand. Okay. We got our new clearance collection. All right. With the Defy the Trends Be the Standard shirts, as well as the No Clearance Collect uh, shirt and the superior no clearance shirt with the dad hats. Dad hats are selling big. Okay. So please make sure you go to noclearancepod.com slash shop. Buy you some merch to support the podcast so we can get bigger and better every week. Thank you. Back to the show. Let's get to sports, man. Uh, great news. Great news uh, on Saturday. Found out that Bronny James, the firstborn heir uh, to the throne. To, to the king. Of himself. LeBron James. <laughs> Bronny James, LeBron's son, has uh, committed to USC. Um, And this is cool. This is cool when they when they interview LeBron about it. He was he was just he was really excited about the fact that Bronny would be the first person in his family uh, to go to college. Yeah, and um, that's really awesome. That's really that's so awesome. Crazy. That's so crazy. That you is know, crazy. LeBron could have been that too. That's the crazy thing. LeBron, yeah, could have been LeBron the first was going to go to Ohio family. State. Yeah, and uh, now nah, he wanted to get to the money, you know, and you hey, know it's, sure. it's different, different times. I, I feel like now. if NIL was around, he back when LeBron, I think he wouldn't have went to school. <clears throat> yeah, for sure, for sure, he would have. They were trying four to. Years. He had no choice. He was about to. He probably was going to lose his eligibility and everything because they was trying to get him because he got man. That cheap. Yeah, they was really trying, and I feel like LeBron. Part of me feel like college would have stifled him. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. I don't know how much you watch college basketball. I don't think college basketball prepares these players for the league as much as it should. It's a it's, college basketball is a totally different game than the NBA. Like I it's, mean, it's a lot slower. It's not as fast paced. It's two um, halves. It's not four quarters. Yeah, yeah. It's two halves. And, Which I don't know, understand why, because even women's college basketball is four quarters. So I don't understand why men's basketball, 
college basketball is the only basketball that's on its halves. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I, know. I couldn't tell you. Somebody had to make that up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure that you know the college game teach you teaches you a lot of different like strategies and yeah and uh in regards to developing these players and to really understanding the you know the game of basketball and when you get to the NBA it probably just speeds it up. I I do think it does that some players need to go to college though. Some people need to go to college to play before they Some go people to the need NBA. to go yeah, some people need to go to get to play with people that are better. Yeah. Um I, and some people need to go just to get away from home and know how to, to know how to, you know, move on their own. I still think the competition is so much uh is better in college basketball than compared to like college football though. Uh, you think the competition in college basketball is better than college football? Yeah, because you could play, in college football, like Dick, you could some teams just blow people out every game. In college basketball, every anybody could lose any day. <laughs> um, well, that's I, okay. Okay, that's <clears throat> in the tournament. You're very true. Yeah, regular season. I'm talking about regular, regular season. Se- as well. No, Sometimes but upsets it, yeah, no, in there, there do be upsets in the regular season. That's fair. But overall, most of these programs, it's like if you play them 20 times, they're going to win 90%. Oh, no, for sure. But still, it's like it's not like sometimes it's like like these games, like it's like, oh, this team's not very good, but they still got a shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I will say, so, I mean, football is a harder sport. College-wise, football is a harder sport for smaller programs Yeah, to Beat the bigger programs because it's literally like bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's why. So yeah, you're right. Any any fool off the street who's good at basketball could come and play on a team and cook somebody. (laughs) You can't. Nobody off the street could go step on a football field and ball the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean by like college basketball is loop. I'm not saying it's not. College football is not competitive. I'm just saying that, like, college basketball is a little bit more competitive. Like, you are playing the top of the top when you're in college. Like, that's why I'm saying it's so beneficial for some du- some of these dudes. Well, to it's hard day. to say that now because, <clears throat> no, that used to be the thing, right? But you can't say that now because the G League um, has yeah. been snatching up a lot of players. And international have. play has been snatching up a lot of play- players. That, that so, too. Um, it's a little, you know, it's harder to say, like, are they really playing the best of the best? Um, but I mean, hey, you get a good education out yeah. of it. I I just feel like I I feel like if LeBron went, um, they might have tried to. They wouldn't have let him be who he was as like a rookie in Cleveland. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah. But yeah. I think college is great for Bronny. I think he's great. I mean, Bronny, for Bronny played in the McDonald's All American game. <clears throat> Boy can shoot lights out. Yeah, like he's a really good shooter. Uh, he's a good defender. Really, he's athletic, but I mean, he ain't top of his class. Yeah, and I'm saying that respectfully. He's not yeah, top of the class, the but top I, of that class. Uh, so I think I know Mikey from, Williams is in top five. I'm probably not. he wasn't even in the All American game. I mean, Mikey Williams. Yeah, that's you know he got arrested. That's, that's, yeah, it's probably why he's shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> we are, look, look. I'm not gonna joke about. It. I really hope. I hope. This does not ruin that man's career because he's been like so. he's been hyped up for so long, so long since his freshman <clears> year. <throat> but it, yo, it's been the longest four years. I'm like, this nigga ain't in college yet. I, I've been he, saying that. I've been like, what? The what, nigga look like he in college. Here? The nigga That's got what I'm so saying. many goddamn tattoos. I didn't know anyone with that many tattoos. When I, I was, was like, in he had to be in school in college by now. But nope, this was his nope. senior. Year. Like, My question is where he get the money for the tattoo. <laughs> I don't know. I answer no question. Good to be under that too. type of spotlight for so long is kind of crazy. It's so crazy. LeBron show. LeBron was a prime example. Yeah. No. For but real, Bronny for real. was under the same spotlight. If, yeah, if but Bronny. I mean, Bronny's under the same spotlight, but Bronny also his father, LeBron James, like yeah, Mikey he Williams from Memphis. Yeah. Going you know what I'm saying? Like Memphis. he ain't. Uh, last time I checked, now I don't know where he lived, but he ain't going home to. Uh, NBA players' house every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, true. Like he, Lebron, ain't around no, no Memphis craziness like Memphis. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think, so, 
I think Mikey Williams was <clears throat> living in San Diego. She was some school he was going to. So uh, I think that happened know. in San Diego. We don't know. But yeah, shout out Bronny going to college, going to USC. That's awesome. Staying awesome. in California. Hey, know, man, breaking up. I, I don't know if it's called a, I don't know if you would say breaking a, gen, I don't know if they call it not going to college a generational curse. Um, You know, because it's for some people, so it ain't for some, but. He's the first generation. He's going to be the first, first generation. generation. Yeah, he's, uh, he's you know, changing the changing the history of the of his family, you know. Were you a, uh, were you a first generation? Nah, I got fucking beat to it by my Uncle Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> my father went to Morehouse. My mother went to Norfolk State. So, oh wow, that's what's up. Yeah. HBC. My mother yeah. dropped out of Norfolk State. She got homesick. Oh wow. Yeah, she went down to. She was at Mount Curtis, but you know, Mount Curtis went to Norfolk State. Awful. That's year. what's up. Yeah. Um, I think he was the first in the family to go to college. My pops was the first, uh, the first in in, uh, in on the Lindsays to go to college. Uh, I was the first to finish, like, four years, like, get in, yeah. get out type situation. Actually, I can't. Oh, Lindsay's. The Lindsay family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's other, other parts of the family. But. That's no, dope. that's awesome. Shout out to him. I hope he excels. I hope he does well. I do think he'll be out after freshman year, though. Yeah, probably. You yeah, know. Looking like um, it. Maybe. You know what? I'll give him two years. I'll give him two yeah. years. I think he should go <clears throat> for his game. For him to be decent in the NBA, I think he should go for two years. I don't think one and done will be maybe, beneficial. Honestly, to him. maybe three. I think I could see him graduating super early. Because yeah. I think if he's gonna stay after if he's gonna stay after the freshman year, I could see him I could see him just like I'm gonna just go ahead yeah. and maybe do Finish three, graduate out. early and go to you know, I've, go to the league. I know LeBron wants him wants to play with him, but I feel like LeBron cares more about him graduating college than playing with him. Big time. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, look, I've seen if you see the people that's been around LeBron, Rich Paul, uh, Maverick, Carter. Yeah, like LeBron gonna put you in position. Yeah, whether for sure. you in the league or not, LeBron gonna put you in position. Like Bronny already got a commercial. Yeah, what for uh, for uh, Thor uh, for God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, so whether he goes professional or not. He'll be fine. He's yeah, going to he's, do good. He, I mean, so. he is the son of uh, of LeBron James. So he's going to be fine for the rest of his life. Yeah, man. Speaking of LeBron, yep. Golden State. Golden State is down 3-1, man. The Lakers yeah. pulled off two wins in a row. No, no, they didn't pull off two wins in a row. The Lakers won game four. Uh, yep. It was a tight one, though. It was a tight yeah. one. Yeah. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, just went off boy? in the fifth, fourth quarter. I mean, <laughs> 15 played. points in the fourth. 15 Fearless, points the whole bro. game. Fearless, 15. bro. Hey, good for him. I know. Good for him. That's one of the, that's it was one of the a, games you won't forget. Yeah, you won't for sure. Because, like, Lonnie Walker, the fourth, been in the league for a minute now. So he I'm has. Happy. He was drafted by the Spurs. And I yeah. remember when he got drafted, he was more, he was known for like being super athletic. Mm-hmm. He had this crazy haircut. Yeah, he had like he had, he had that Miami style hair with the dreads. He had the dread. The he had Twist. a hat. He had yeah. a hat. Yeah, he got rid of that yeah. hat. He got he got cut that. Yeah. He got rid of that hat. <laughs> Did you hear what Draymond said about it? What did he say? Draymond was like, it was still a win for us because we locked up LeBron and AD and forced Lonnie Walker the fourth to beat us. I he think, was like um, any any other day of the week, you know. He was like any other day of the week, you forced Lonnie Walker. A player who hadn't scored a whole game. No, that's true. You. You that's know, true. You the whole the, point uh, in the playoffs, you lock down the best players and make. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what. Um, and oh, my bad. And make everyone make the role players win the game for you. Yeah, I remember for sure. that's what I remember back when LeBron was in Cleveland. That's what Doc Rivers used to tell the Celtics. It yeah. Was like, just stop twenty three. Yeah. <laughs> like, and uh, let everyone else, else try to do, beat you. Yeah, everyone else. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, look, hey, he stepped up. He stepped up. I think they're going to go in with the same game plan in game five. And if they yeah. come out on the wrong end of it, it's like we did what we could. They you stepped think, up. You think Steph could pull off a 3-1 comeback against the Lakers? Now, here's the thing. He's done it before. I'm a te- He's done before versus... 
Okay. KD. Yeah. KD don't play defense like he LeBron. Don't. LeBron plays both ends of the court at in the playoffs at a hundred percent. And and LeBron doesn't have a selfish point guard and a uh, and a power forward that can't make a mid range jumper. Shout out to yeah. Ibaka, I, I respect you, but failed they everyone on that yeah. team failed Durant in that series. Um, yeah, truly failed Durant. Now, oh. can Steph do it? Probably, maybe it's going to take. Look, next the game six is going to take another one of those Clay Thompson thirty three point quarters. Yeah. You know, Clay Thompson do for for a game where he just goes off. Yeah, he do. He for ain't it. been the same though. He ain't been the same. That's okay. He ain't been the same all season. I don't know if he's gonna have one. That's of those okay. Moments. He gonna feel it for Game Six. Hey, we'll see. I think. I think, we, I think they're gonna win Game Six. And if you win Game Six, um, you mean Game Five? Thank you. They're gonna win Game Five. <clears throat> the problem is Golden State is terrible on the road. Yeah. I know they won the game seven, but this season, historically, they've not been good on the road. And yeah. also, Draymond, like, if you have this little Schroeder dude on you, you kind of got to take that shot. Yeah. They switched it and they left him on Schroeder. You got to take that shot. They try, you know, I know they had a, I know they had a play, passed it off, turnover, but I don't know. I don't know. But that's, that's, know, that's looking at it after, you yeah. know, it's all said and done. So. All right, <clears throat> we also have uh, Sixers in Boston playing the day of we are recording this episode, playing the night Tuesday. game five in Boston. Tough series, um, going back and forth, you know. I, yeah, it's tough, but I think Embiid has gotten his legs under him. I think he's gotten warmed up and nobody has an answer for him. Eh, We're going to see what happens. We but shall see. The thing is, see. if Harden, if Harden scores, plays, plays if aggressive. Harden scores. <laughs> Not even scores. Well, no, literally. If Harden can even give it, if Harden give us twenty, we fourth quarter tight. I guess so. All I know is my Celtics. They they don't lose twice. They I also twice. need Maxi. to make some more shots. <laughs> no, not yeah. you know what? Not even because I Maxi keep just do what you do. It's this nigga Tobias Harris. Hey, because Tobias point- Harris only Tobias Harris only got one move. He literally got one move. He, he, he was dribbled, bragging he dribbled. about we got the pies hairs. I was like, who? Bro, he dribbled to his spot. He dribbled to that mid race spot every time and shoots it. And it's like, how does this nigga not make it? Mm. <laughs> it's like, is yeah. this the this this the only move you practice? My thing is, we can't have Marcus Smart scoring twenty points because obviously, when Marcus Smart starts scoring, we don't win. Well, we Jay Tatum, Tatum got to stop passing the ball off. Yeah, you got to at, at, at the end. You got to take these shots. Yeah, you got to start taking them shots. It was only you down one. You got to yeah. the lane and passed it off. Yeah, I'm you sorry. You got to take these shots. You got to take them shots, man. You got to take them shots. Jay Tatum, you know, I have no worry in this series. I'm not worried. As one series, I'm just not worried about. I know we going to win. Okay. I know it. I know it. We going to bust your ass now. We in Boston. We going to bust your ass. And that's what it is. I ain't gonna talk shit before the game. I don't understand. Even Siri, even <laughs> Siri, Siri don't understand it. what you're saying. Siri said, saying, "I don't understand what you say." No, she and she's right because no, she did at not. the end of the day, we got too many weapons. Y'all can do all that flopping and all that BS you want. Hey, all I'm we saying, I don't, I'm not going to talk. I don't talk. Marcus shit Smart the game. is wearing a. I don't talk ch- shit Marcus before the game. Smart all I know is, is I'm wearing a chest pad. Y'all okay. niggas is bruised and battered. We stepped on that so nigga what? Grant Williams' face. Stepped on his face and he came back in the game and still balled the fuck out. <laughs> nigga, and me, he stepped on his face. I think Yo, that he last stomped game, the fuck he out that face, too. That was bad. Dash, he did apologize. He apologized, in, he apologized right when he came back in. He felt bad. That was an accident. No, that was for a sure. complete accident. That was not a Dray, Draymond Green situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was a that but was no, a complete accident. I am thoroughly enjoying this series. Um, yeah, it's a good series. You know, growing up, uh, I've hated Boston since I was a child. Now, I didn't know why for a long time. I, my pops would just be like, we hate Boston. Uh, but after living up in that area for <laughs> You didn't years, live in nobody's Boston, so you don't I even know. understand. I, I literally said that area. The area. That's not that area. That don't New count. England. An hour away New don't England. count. 
Yes, that it don't does. count. Get the it don't New count. England. I Our way in, don't count. I lived in New England amongst fans of the Celtics. <laughs> I've Ain't been in the garden. You. Yeah, they have been in the garden. I can understand why people don't like to. You know what? They hate us because they ain't us. They call us Title Town for also a the what's that show? Uh, what was that show? Um, uh, Winning Time. Oh, Winning Time. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I see why. I see why niggas said <laughs> people did not oh, like. Yeah, it. Whatever, man. They just always gotta villainize us. You know what? I like bro, being a villain. I bro, like being a villain. I like somebody villain. pooped on on Bill Russell's bed after. He won a championship for y'all. That was in the seventies, man. That still, was in the seventies. Hey, white that. people going white people never stop being racist. I'm sorry, white people live. still gonna be racist. You Don't matter live. if you went for, but Look, not. you gotta live with that, Playboy. I'm sorry, yeah. I wasn't there. I wasn't even alive. I didn't <laughs> All right, know. one more thing. Now the Knicks is playing. Knicks playing the Heat. The Knicks are currently yeah. down three one. Um, Jay, can you can you explain to me this Julius Randle situation? Mm. Julius Randle just completely gave up on the series. Like, there's plays where, literally, they're on a fast break, and <laughs> Julius Randle's walking up the court. Not on a fast, fast break. break. Back on defense. Just walking up on the court. Walking up the court. Literally, he'll turn the ball over. Like, they'll, they'll turn the ball over, like, on the other, like, passing the ball in after the score. Turn the ball over. He won't even try to defend. He just let them score. Like he just like completely checked out his because he going. ain't scoring. Because he ain't because his shots ain't going in. So the problem with Juice Randall is when his shots don't get in, he gets all pissy. About Why he it acting like he can't playing. affect the game in other ways? The man I, built I like know. a linebacker. My man Jalen Brunson is fucking running around the court, dreads flopping everywhere. You just running circles around Julius Randall trying to cover his man. Because Julius Randle just gave up on the game. Now I don't give a fuck because my Heat, my second team. First of all, always been my second team. They have, uh, first of all, I oh I can't deal with this. I can't. I've had two days my whole goddamn life. I've had two days my whole motherfucking life. Be changing. I don't. What? Who's your team, nigga? Who is your I have two team? teams. Two because teams. The, the no, Heat and the Celtics. The Heat and the past, Celtics. You the can't past, live somewhere. You can't live say somewhere the, and not be a say fan the of the team. Say the names again. Say the, the names again. The Heat and the Celtics. Who what team went first? What team went first? You can't. You can't be a. You what can't team live did you say first? Team. <laughs> what team did I say first? My yes. first team was the Heat, but now my second okay. my second team. No, ain't no switching. No, it's not switching. They stole my team. Either way, if they make it to the NBA Finals, I win. You are a Heat fan. I am also a Celtics fan. The Celtics is your number two. You cannot. Listen here. Listen here. You cannot live somewhere and not be a fan of the team. There got to be something wrong Let me break it down. Let me break this down for you because I understand what you're saying. I am a Sixers fan, right? I'm born in Philly, family in Philly, woo do woo. But if the Wizards make the playoffs and they not playing Philly, I'm rooting for the Wizards. But the Wizards my number as, two. But here's listen, here, listen. As time has gone on, the, the Heat is I've your gone team. From my one team, no, from my two ain't no, no, ain't no. As I've time gotten going older, on. as I've gotten older ain't no and mature. You, yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, listen, listen. Don't tell me how to live my this life. Said, Don't tell me how to live my it, life. Said, oh, I, I got You control. could, I could, af- oh. I could appreciate one team more than the other over time. I don't understand what the issue is. I, you know, I got two teams. They I both. I always know you got two teams, but you out here changing your mind when it's, I'm not co- when it's convenient. Mind. For your ass. No, it is not convenient for my ass. They went to my number two team with Dwayne Wade retired. Okay? <laughs> Dwayne Wade retired. So now the Heat are my number two team. I don't cap for them the same way I do because there's my the Dwayne Wade ain't there no more. But I still it will be always be a fan of the Miami Heat. But I am more of a Celtics fan nowadays as I was than I was a Heat fan. That's all I'm saying. That's all I gotta say. Ever since Dwayne right. Wade left, the Heat have not been my priority team. You know what I'm saying? You could, I, my priority of teams I root for have switched as I got older and as Dwayne Wade has left. All right, let's move on. 
Let's move on. And the Suns are balling the fuck out right now. Never booked. No, yeah. Shout out to Phoenix. Has averaged sixty. Is averaging sixty three percent field goal percentage. It seems like they're better without Chris Paul, which is weird. Which because is, well, they playing. They playing at. They're playing at a faster pace without Chris yeah, Paul. Yeah, for sure. Chris Paul controls no the game in his own way. Because I know if he tried to play at this pace that they're playing now, he'd pull another, the other groin. Yeah, and also a hamstring. More. Yeah. So I wonder, I wonder if the coach, if coach got the balls to the bring Benjamin? CP off the bench. Mm, I don't know. I don't I think, think you like that. I think at this point he'd be a good bench option. Cameron Payne come in there, speed the game up, turn into a track race, and then we need a now we need the closer. Yeah. CP. Just have Chris Paul be a coach. No, he needs to play. He can no, no, I'm just saying, but like, oh, why yeah, yeah, just yeah. have him keep coaching? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, all right. <clears throat> Let's get to uh, this. This what is this? All right, Jay. Uh, this is this was on the notes. And uh, do you think? Okay, should men get plastic surgery? So I is seen this question? post. Yes. Okay. So I see this post the other day. Oh, earlier today, I put it in the group chat. And apparently, men have been getting uh, liposuction in their stomachs and doing all these type. well, rappers specifically, have been getting a lot of plastic surgery lately to lose weight instead of working out in the gym. And I don't know how to feel about it. I feel like it's a cheat code. But would you do... The, the question is, Would you, if you had the money, would you not go to the gym and would you just get plastic surgery to lose weight? I, I enjoy the gym. So if I had the money, I'd be at the gym. Yeah, that's um, what I feel. If I had the money, I'd be at the gym. I also can't blame nobody for doing that if you got the money because you busy. Yeah. You know. Some people, just, <laughs> some people don't like working out. Yeah. Um, I like the gym. If I had the more money I have, I feel like the more time I would have to go to the gym. Seriously. I would be in there taking all types of classes. I would I'd be a. I wouldn't even go to the gym. I think I'd build a gym in my house Ooh. if I had the money. I'd no, turn, yeah, no, that that's that's the move. That's the, that's really the move. The ultimate going gym. to some, but going to the gym is sometimes just a hassle. I you come by. That. I come by the crib. We just come over each other's house and whatever. yeah, build and one in the could, garage. Yeah, put a stake on the grill. Make sure it's a, yeah. Make sure it's a. I insulated for the winter. If you live somewhere oh, cold. Oh man, that's fire! Rubber floor. I fall, yeah, Drop all bro. the weights as much as we want. Speakers around oh that thing. Oh my god! Just you know yeah, loud as shit. Oh put my the god! Guy, uh, put the uh, had the TV on ESPN. Man, yeah, what? I got. I subscribe to this YouTube channel called uh, Garage Gems. Oh, and some of these garage gems. Hey, look into it. Some of these garage gems, bro, are crazy. If only I, I had learned a how to make a garage gym from this damn channel. Oh, that's how you made the get. bench. That's how you made the bench. Now I learned that from another channel, oh. but. I learned what like to do to make sure you could have a gym floor, which is better but more beneficial to put for the uh, for a gym floor than um, what you actually than um, what they actually sell to make gym floors. You know what oh, I'm saying? Okay, I'm gonna check so, it like, out. So like they say, like you gotta get like uh, horse stable mats. Horse stable, like the mat, like the mats they use in a horse stable. Yeah. Instead of buying the foam shit that they sell in the store, because the the stuff, whatever, some, whatever the, whatever the material that's for like horse stables is way better material, especially for like dropping weights and stuff like that. Cool, cool. I'm actually. It don't even cost about, that much money. I'm thinking about moving. Um, Me too. In the next like three to five. Yeah. So I, I definitely will look into that, especially for. Especially the if you next get a two car garage, just make one side. I'm actually trying to put it in a basement. I don't think I want to do the garage. The only reason I want to do it in the garage because in the summer when it get hot, you can just open up the door. Ah. Uh, and you got air coming in, you know, you're not sweating bullets. Not sometimes I like up. to work out in my drawers, though. So then close the door. You got the option. <laughs> yeah, but if it's hot. Hey, me too, bro. Hey, you just throw on some compression shorts, bro. I'll be you know working what I'm I you feel you. me? I like I I do personally like working out hot, like make the room hot when I work yeah, out. Because you go, you want to you want to feel the sweat pause. Yeah, you want to like know that you did something. 
Exactly. If you, you know work out and you ain't sweating, I'm like, did you really even work out? Exactly. That's why people who work out and they don't really sweat too much, I never believe it. I'll be at the gym lifting and stuff, and I'm like, I don't. I feel like you feel like you got to keep going, but I'm like, I've yeah. been here for an hour. Now that's that's yeah. my max. I was my a, max in the gym. Oh, word. Yeah, my I've been trying to uh, slow my uh, lessen my time. But I spend so much time uh, warming up nowadays that. Uh... <laughs> How long is your warm up? About fifteen minutes, maybe fifteen twenty. Minutes. How we get into this plastic surgery? Yeah, should men get plastic surgery? Obviously, we don't really care about it because <laughs> we like going to the gym. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, have you heard about this pill that is helping people lose weight? What's it called? Because I think I may have taken it. Is it prescribed by a doctor? It's prescribed oh. by a doctor. So it's actually supposed to help diabetes patients. Okay. But people have been taking it to lose weight. And what it oh. what it does is just it just removes your desire to eat food. Um, oh, yeah. That, that's exactly yeah. what I took. It's called yeah. Fentermine. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. A couple years ago, remember when I lost 45 pounds? My doctor prescribed me fentanyl. And so how do you how do you ask the doctor? You just be like, I'm trying to lose. My weight. doctor, honestly, I didn't ask the nigga. The nigga was like, "You're overweight. Here, yeah, I was <laughs> prescribe this to you, help you lose the weight." <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, after Don Bro's wedding, I went to the doctor. He was like, "Oh." Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I ain't laughing at you. Hey, I'm laughing at you got the, the sound effect. It, I, that's exactly what he said. He was like, "Oh, uh, you you having trouble uh, losing weight?" I was like, "Yeah, I've been trying to lose weight." He was like, "I'm prescribing this; it should help you." So essentially, it curbs your appetite and gives you mad fucking and it's speed, bro. They, it, they the people are just taking speed because I take that you take one, that pill, thirty minutes, you're fucking zooming. You like it's like you drink a cup. That's like you drink two, three cups of coffee. The okay. doctor was like. But I was like, be careful with it. Um, if your heart rate gets too fast, stop taking it. <laughs> it just does his <laughs> Okay, that's what's up. Was, because I was like, one, one day, I, the first time I took it, right, I was like, I, I looked down, and then I looked up, and everything just locked in. <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, I need to do something. I'm going to go to the gym. And then I went to the gym. I was fucking running on the treadmill. <laughs> Freaking, I was working mad hard. And then you got so much energy, you don't even think about eating. Okay, cool. That's, That's essentially what it does. That's so it curves your appetite by speeding up your heart rate that give you and gives you energy. So I lost mad weight when I was doing it. And you just don't think about eating. You just think about doing stuff. What rappers do you think got plastic surgery? Drake. I knew, well, that was the beard. You think he got lipo? Yeah, in his tummy, in his stomach. Yeah, that, I think he got ab etching too. You, ooh. That's a lot for a nigga that don't take off his shirt. Right? <laughs> <laughs> for but somebody was, that the, don't, ben, for somebody ben, that ben don't walk Kemo around with or his, something like that. He was talking about it, how he, he got lipo He don't his shirt off. He don't yeah, because he I think lipo. he got... I think he got the light bulb and I think he got a tummy tuck with some ab edging. Remember with that picture when he took with his shirt off? Yeah. I was like, hey, that looked like some ab etching. That looks like some Bernice Burgos type shit. Yeah. Bernice Burgos is a whole 50 years old looking like she's 22. Crazy. It is crazy. absolutely absurd. Crazy. Crazy. That is absolutely absurd. Okay, well, is, is it acceptable? I don't... Honestly, I don't care. I'm like, women could do it. Why can't men do it? I don't know, man. I, 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 men, I feel like men can't do it because the our standards of beauty aren't pushed like yeah. like the women's standards of beauty. Like, there's not a real importance for us to be doing stuff like that. We just gotta that. have a nice face. Yeah, there's not an importance for us to be doing stuff like that when, you know, women actually be using that to, you know, get to certain levels in different industries. Like, yeah. most dudes, especially a nigga like Drake who has never done anything with a shirt off. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, what are we doing this for? 
I don't know. There's no reason. For yourself. In reality, are they really doing it for themselves? That's what I'm Probably saying. Not. So if I, I were to like, do it, it would be for myself. I feel like as a man, uh, you know, do what you want. I mean, it's like, if, I hey, mean, look, if I just had fat money men to bag spend, some Fat men bag women too. I'm saying. Hey, some, yeah, some fat right. men bag more women than most men. Uh, it just seems like it just seems like a waste of money. Isn't it always though? I feel like all of it's a waste of money because going to the gym is literally the way, the cheap way to do it. Don't it like depends because you, you trainers, I ain't gonna get into it. I ain't gonna get into I, it. I, nope, I'm not talking about trainers. I'm not talking about trainers. All right, that shit so we'll is move expensive. on. We'll move on, man. Shout out. Do you want to start a remote podcast? Well, we have the perfect website for you, Riverside.fm, where you can record. Remote podcasts and video interviews and studio quality from anywhere. Used by over 70 plus thousand creators and Fortune 500 firms. Riverside allows you to upload your video and audio while recording on your web browser itself. That means you don't have to download any apps onto your computer. Riverside also allows you to edit your video and audio on the platform and cut up clips from your recording for social media. So if you're thinking of starting a, a podcast, it's as easy as clicking the link in the description. Thank you. Now let's get back to the show. To uh, Saucy Santana. Saucy Santana was featured on a uh, the the latest IDK album. Um, Jay, I haven't heard the song. Jay, what did you think of the song? Uh, it's interesting. Good song. <laughs> oh, Good for song. those who don't know, Saucy Santana. Uh, how would you describe him, Jay? Big gay man. Big gay man rapper. Yeah, it's, yeah big, big gay, gay man, man rapper. Yeah, he raps. is the one who. Uh, who said men should not be smoking hookah? That is gay. I, which I don't believe in. Well, here's the I, thing: how does you smoke smoking hookah? something make you gay? <laughs> you feel I'm just that? saying, I do smoke hookah. How does smoking hookah? How does smoking something make you gay? When did I, hookah become a woman's I, only thing or a gay man know. thing? I'm pretty sure uh, niggas in the Middle East have been That's doing that for generations. That's and what I'm honestly, saying. Honestly, it's a we shouldn't be doing it in America. We should only be doing it in the Middle East, if that's the case. The most that and low key, you know, they the most home. Those are a lot of very homophobic countries, and they smoking hookah. And they smoking hookah like chimneys. Big facts. All right, saucy. <laughs> what do yeah. you think? Um, song was good. I could see it being played a lot on the radio in the clubs, for sure. Yeah. Um the album's called F sixty five. It has like a um what's that? Uh like uh the drag racing thing, the Grand Prix, like uh with you know the you know them cars with the wings and shit. I don't yeah. know what they call. Um they just had one in Miami. Formula One. They Formula, Formula one. one in Miami. Yeah, yeah. The song's called Pinot Noir. Good one. And it sounds like it's it's a song full. For the like, it sounds like a good time, you know. So like the beat, IDK said he heard the beat, he heard Saucy Santana rapping on the beat, and he was like, he has to be on this song. He can't not be in the song. So I just think it's interesting. Like, I think this is the first time he's been featured on like a straight rapper's song. So like, this may open some doors for the brother. Good for him. I mean, music's not for me, but you know, it's for somebody. What other rapper? Do you think Saucy Santana? I think Drake's Drake's gonna get him next. I think Drake's gonna get him next. I think Drake. I think he's gonna get him on Drake's song, and then it's gonna be crazy. I'm not. I'm like I said, it's not for me, but I see women like. Nah, you know what? Uh, Yeah, that it would make Drake could figure out a way. I feel like figure out a way. I also thought I feel like Big Sean could could get away with that. Yeah, yeah. He make another song about ass. You know, so yeah, no, for real, for real, for real. Yeah, and then, for sure. It, it, and, and then, you know, you slap Janae on the hook. Yeah. He got to have his Real wife solid. On there. Gotta, have your, gotta have your lady on there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She big shout but out yeah, to Sean and his son. We gonna, you know. We'll review the album next week after Tyler listens to it. I thought it was yeah. a good album, personally. I'm going to tune in. I'm a I'm fan a of IDK. In. Yeah, you know what? I got to listen to his last joint, too. You know, yeah, so, I like this so last So the last one. I ain't really dive in too deep. I yeah. did listen to it, but I it, Vince Staples album came out literally the same time. 
I think so, yeah. And in my I opinion, think I listened to both those albums the same day. In my opinion, I, the Vince Staples one, to me, was so daggone good. Like, I wasn't really yeah. listening to anything else. They were very similar, I want to <laughs> say. IDK, nah, to me, is like a very, very similar rapper. Like, they're he in the is, same. I feel like they're in the same lane. They're in the same category, but Vince Staples' album was way different. IDK's thought, was very energy, energy. Vince Staples, the, the Vince Staples album. Um, it was it was a lot. It was a way different energy than uh, IDK's jump. I f- you forget the album name, but it was a way different energy. But anytime, anytime you play, if you shuffle them, then they're gonna be in the same thing. But yeah, um, yeah. I'm I like IDK. I'm I'll a let fan, you know. I'm a fan. <clears throat> we'll talk about it next week when KC back on. Um, do your See job. See how kids. she feels about Saucy Santana. All right. Um, let's talk about this Ebony K. Williams situation. Yeah, can you can you break this down for me? Because I don't, I wasn't really paying attention to it, but I was intrigued enough to like want to talk about it. Ebony K. Williams has a uh, she has a podcast called I think it's called Holding Court. Yeah. She interviewed who Yvonne Yvonne Land. Oh yeah, I know Van Zant. Yes, Ivanya Van Sant. I believe that's how you say her name. I thought it was Ivanya. Who knows? The black. Know. I just know wise, she saves your life. I just know she wise, saves your life. Yes, the wise <laughs> black woman. <clears throat> it was a clip that went viral. Pretty much, Ebony was like, you know, like uh, I'm. I'm rephrasing. Like, how are we as black women? Supposed to date these men when they not up to our standard. That's pretty much what she was saying. A lot of these men, she ain't even talking black men. She ain't even just talking black men. She's just saying men in general are not trying to step up to the plate and provide the resources they need. Quote, unquote, resources they need. And the wise black woman, because I'm struggling to say her name. My apologies. Ayanya. I, Ayanya. That's how you Ayanya say it. Ayanya Van Sant. I'm str- yeah, I, yeah. Thank you. She I'm said. I'm thinking about it. After she asked the question, right? The first thing she said is, would you date a bus driver? And she goes, uh, if he owns the bus. And, <laughs> and she said, see, that's the wrong criteria. She said, I would date a bus driver if he loved driving the bus, if he loved his mama. If he had good character, you know, treated you all, you know, all that good stuff, all that would. Yeah. Apparently, a lot of bus drivers was feeling some type of way. I mean, if I was a bus driver, I feel away. Bus driving is a good job. <laughs> That's a important, good job. It's an important job too, by the way. Important job, and they got great benefits. Don't great don't, benefits. No, hey, hey, come telling you, these cars are getting expensive. You marry you a right bus. Now. Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now. You marry a bus driver, you. You that health insurance, you get anything done. So check this. Ebony decides to respond on her live and pretty much saying, like, y'all could be average if y'all want. You know what I'm mm. saying? But I am she feels like she is trying to push, she just wants black men to do better and stop accepting average and mediocre. Stop accepting the C's and D's and, you know, aim to do better, aim to strive for something better than average mediocre jobs. And a lot of people that now that really shook a lot yeah. of people because they was like, yeah, cause that's, what that's is wrong the- with being average? What is wrong with being mediocre? Uh, we like our jobs. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, that, pe- that actually, I don't like that. That don't sit well with me, bro. Yeah. That like doesn't sit well with me at all. I feel the offended. That support her. And she was like, so like she came on, too. so like hold her. on, so hold on. She came on a breakfast club. She came on a breakfast club to uh, uh, defend herself once again. And it was funny because DJ Envy spazzed. Yeah, a couple I've seen times. that. They even yeah. had a DJ Envy like upset meter. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is what I think she was trying to say, right? I don't know if you've seen the statistic. The average income of a black family 
is thirty five thousand dollars in America. Good. The average Oof. Amer- That's income, so- the average American income of a black American family. I'm not talking African Americans. I'm talking black Americans. Thirty five thousand dollars. The highest is Indian Americans. They averaging a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? So when she sees that statistic, what she's saying is, we can't accept. I thought she. This is what I thought she was saying. Like we can't continue to accept the roles and jobs that we're taking and do nothing to try and continue to you know to to level up. Like. Yeah. She was saying her mama was a bus driver. Her mama had a CDL license. She took that CDL license and got enough money to uh, end up buying a daycare center. To took yeah. money from the daycare center and got two daycare centers. Like it's it was just like she was. She felt like there was a uh, uh, we as black people, and maybe she. I think she might be specifically talking to black men, but like. At some point, we just stop trying to reach our full potential and are just okay with doing this one job that's like, I go in, get my money, get out, and I'm chilling afterwards, right? She's just, and overall, she was just saying, like, I just want people to try and push to be their greatest self. Then why did she say that? I don't know. I, I truly that's don't what know. she was trying that sounds way better than what she said what she said is that what niggas is being cold. mediocre and average and it sounds like it, well no it she said like she, no she said we being mediocre she, yeah she said niggas but she's like i need y'all she just wants us to try and so so she's but she she but what does that have to do with her dating a bus driver she, I don't know. I think she called being a bus. I feel like she's not trying to call being a bus driver average, but a lot of people took it as like, "What you got against my job?" Yeah, what that you know? Because like, like you know, you, sometimes yeah. people because being a bus driver, like I said, is still a good like that's a seventy, eighty thousand dollar a year job without overtime. The real question is, what are we considering average? Exactly. What is average? I mean, I I personally think an average job is you making fifty, sixty k a year. You know, maybe forty, maybe between forty and sixty, and but that that's average. I feel like that's is that's average. Not going to college, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Then making forty, sixty. That's I feel like that's average. I feel like once you go to college, you're above the average. And then, yeah, I don't know. I just I don't feel know. like I don't know where her expectations were. I feel like this goes back are. to the dating down debate. Women really worry about dating down when men never worry about that. No, no, not men at all. Men never no, worry about that. So, like, I don't understand. Like, men don't even look at a woman's finances when they go to pursue them. So, we like, I don't ask KC this, but. You know they always you talk make, about. I feel, they always talk about a man needs to check his ego at the door, right? Yeah. Um, it sounds man, like when women start making money, got check. I don't want to. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. But maybe they need to check their egos at the door. <laughs> you know I what I'm saying? Both, like I, it's it's about time that the com- the conversation isn't about money and resources. It's yeah. about when you have a certain somewhat a certain uh, one up on somebody. Yeah. Are you are you able to put your ego to the side and actually be with somebody for who they are and not what what they bring? And yeah. uh, it just doesn't sound like um you know black women on in media that are asking these questions doesn't sound like they're able to do that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, Cause I'll tell you right now, especially brothers that in our in our age, um, we still trying to get it. Yeah, I, I, we still trying to get it. We still trying to figure things out, and um, you know, we just a I'm lot of like black. Men. There's a couple of things, right? A lot of black men don't. We're tired. They're tired of going the traditional route. Yeah, I hate to see it. Because, you know, getting a college degree is the quickest way for most people to get to a six-figure 
or close to yeah. a six figure salary, right? Um, with a lot of dudes are tired of going the traditional route, and so they are trying to go. You know, they're not. They got to grind. You know what I'm saying? You know, and and part of that grind really is learning, is taking the L's. Yeah. Like part of that is going through the experience once, you know, a couple of times and, and failing. And it seemed like ain't a lot of room, you know, a lot of, you know, these women see these dudes trying to do stuff and not giving them that room of failure. It's, it sounds like they don't, we don't get a lot of grace. Exactly. And honestly, yes. that is, yo, seriously, that's all we want. That's really yeah. one of those things where I'm like, I just want the grace to fail. And I'm not, and you don't tell me I told you so, or mm-hmm. or you laughing at a nigga like just this what I'm doing, this is what I'm gonna try to do. Now, I ain't gonna put us in a hole or nothing, but if it don't work out, it don't it work don't out. work out. That don't yeah. mean like you lose trust in a nigga. It just mean I I learned my lesson. I'm gonna figure it out next time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I I just feel like I just feel like a lot of times it's like. For men, as being a man, you're expected to do everything and always go above and beyond. And do it correctly. And do it right. But we going through life. Exactly. We're going through life too. And like I understand <laughs> that like because of the patriarchy, and I feel like this is all the patriarch's fault. It is. It, men, no, yeah. And that put pressure on to, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We put the pressure on ourselves and women put the pressure on us as well because the patriarchy put it in their minds that the men have to provide for them. So now that when situations when women make more money, I'm bringing it back to the day and down thing because this is what it all sounds to me. This it sounds like it's all <laughs> steps to this day and down concept that to this day don't make no sense. Yeah. When you get married, bro, whoever makes it don't matter who makes more because it's together. It's y'all money. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Whoever makes the most money. Now I feel like because of the patriarchy, when, or when the woman makes more money, they think less of the man. Because the patriarch is said that the man has to provide. But why can't women provide? If this whole world, if this is, if everybody wants to be equal nowadays, everyone <laughs> wants to be equal, whoever makes the most money is the provider. Well, I, I feel like, but I don't think I don't. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because there's always ways to provide without having money. But whoever makes the most money, you can't look down at the person you're with. Because men I, don't well, do that. I don't look. No, men don't look down at their women. Historically, in no. the past, they have. But nowadays, men don't look down at their women. They don't make enough money. No. If 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 you think about when a man when they're when you're in a when a situation when y'all need more money. And you're not gonna look at your wife like, oh, you need to make more money. You're gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna figure this out and make more money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So like I just I don't know. I feel like it stems that because that was extremely disrespectful. Like, oh, the mediocre and and average things. And that was extremely disrespectful, especially when in regards to jobs like being a bus driver. Now, I don't know anyone who uh who I don't know anyone who who uh Became in that field and didn't have to work to get that job. It's not an easy job to get. Not everyone could be a bus driver. Get a CDL license. And then once you get the CDL license, you have to get the job. And it's super competitive. Mm. So, like, if you become a bus driver, that that means you beat out a bunch of people for that job. You can't just apply and get it. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, dog, driving the bus around the city... It is it's a, a very task. difficult task. Yeah, <laughs> but like I don't know. I understand what she's what when you said what you said what what you said about like we need to be better. And as it, black and, people. and it's not and it's I not agree just with that sentiment. Yeah. It's not just like it's like all right. I For think someone as a saying, lawyer, she really argued that very wrong. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. I was like, I hear what she's saying, but she is it is coming out terribly. For some for something that for someone that uh. She not, she not, she wasn't, in the end, she wasn't trying to diss you being a bus driver or doing a yeah. service type job. It's just the fact that what are we doing with this, with this role? Like, yeah. what are you doing with that money? Some what people, you, what's your some plan? people don't believe in 
Like uh, some people aren't good with business like that. Like good for her mother for being able to bus be a bus driver. No, rack no, up that's her money, fair. But I do care. think I do think we it is something to just because you don't think you're good at it, you gotta learn. But and you his, gotta the, you have to at least get out there and try because if but you even, don't even if try, you're not good at even if let's say you you then you don't what if you just that's not just not just not what you want to do. What if that's just like. I just want to be able to make money and provide for my family, make sure we have a roof over our house for the rest of our lives and for the future generations. Dog, I'm not telling people to, but I think this no, is I know, what, no, this, no. But I'm this, saying this like what she's saying. But how you does don't that have to be does, business? You don't got to be business savvy. But that's what. But I, I'm just asking: is that does that contribute to the advancement of of of? Is that count? As, is that still mediocre? If that's all you worry about, is like, if no, that's sure first of all, that's good? what every black. That's what at least as a man, that's what every black man, especially if you got a family. The whole yeah. w- once you have a family, the whole point is to make sure they're good, and then when you gone, they are financially provided for exactly. you, and at least giving them a jump start. You know, so what I'm, I'm saying? I, that's what I'm just trying to figure out. So what I'm just trying to figure out what makes. Jay, you got to understand. Better. You got to understand. What gets you out of the average and mediocrity? You know what I'm saying? Because if that what is that considered average and mediocre? Is that's what I'm asking? Yeah. So what does she consider that? This is what I got from. It. Like, like in my family, dog. You got to understand. I've been to funerals where folk ain't had no life insurance. Yeah. And we talked about this before. You know what I'm saying? Like historically, we have not prepared. To help the next generation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ain't leave them no assets. We just leave them a box of jewelry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. Respectfully to anybody who, you know, somebody who passed away. All she's saying is like, what are we doing to add on to what we're doing now? And that don't have to be business. You know what I'm saying? If you just, you just, I feel like it's just important to make sure you use all your gifts and talents. And I think yeah. that's really what she what she doing, and you know, part hey. of that is gaining informa- gaining more information, actually applying that information, because a lot of people can get caught up in analysis paralysis and not really doing anything. But at the end of the day, I think it is important that people do have something outside of the nine to five that they're trying to do to to continue to better and improve themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's but that's what I'm asking because like. Let's say you have a nine to five and you don't do anything outside, but all you care about is provide, making sure. That, so I'm just confused on the concept. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand what she means besides like business or doing something outside. Like, I get that, but like, what is expected? Like, what does she expect us to do? Like, like you said, gain knowledge. What knowledge is there to get? What knowledge? What it, does it I have mean, to be financially to beneficial? That. You know what I'm saying? Because so. like there could be knowledge that you could gain knowledge outside of some and has no benefit for anybody, but you're still going out and gaining. You know what I'm saying? So like, like I just want to know like what I do she think thinks. She seems like she's very caught up in the financial aspect. She got she got a foot. She 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 has a foot in her mouth and she can't get it out. Yeah, and I it think sounds she, like, she, and she just digging a hole deeper and deeper by trying to defend herself. She should have just left it yeah. how it was after she said, "No, I won't date a bus driver." Obviously, she's a lawyer. She probably want to date someone who makes just as much money as her. She should have never said. She should have never doubled down and explained on her IG live. That was her I mean, first mistake. I think financially, I feel like she does want the black people to do better. Yeah, um, for I sure. mean, of course, it's not. It's part of our fault that we are that we are at that statistic, but you I don't know, think of course, it's, our fault. it's, it's I think historically it's a, we've been it's held back. back to slavery. Historically, we've been held back. Um, but that's why she's trying to push, like, yeah, you know, hey, what we we need to do, but it, it's it's coming off bad. It's coming. When, off bad. Yeah, yeah, I understand what she's saying, but what she, what she's talking about, but what she's saying isn't what she's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I get what she's talking about, but what she's saying doesn't match it up. So I don't know. Speaking of, what... uh, <laughs> speaking of trying to, uh, I guess, do better. I got into real estate. Oh well, okay. 
I'm getting in the of course I remember I told you I took that real estate investment class. Um mm-hmm. so now I'm trying to apply a lot of these lessons. And yeah. Um really I'm only bringing this up cuz this is literally what my life has been like for the past 2 weeks, 2 3 weeks. Mm-hmm. I, I, I I besides sports I ain't got much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so uh of course I found an agent. Um I went, I'm going with a different agent than I normally do. Uh, but I found it on biggerpockets.com. Bigger Pockets is a great website for anybody getting getting into real estate investment or you just want to learn about real estate in general. Um, they have great resources. It's a whole like uh for they got forums, they got chat rooms and stuff. You could just ask questions and people put, answer. Yeah, put the link for it in the description of the episode. So sure, sure, sure. Can... Yeah, bigger pockets. Uh so found a real estate agent on there, black woman. Um, all right, so here was my here's was, here's what was my original idea for getting an investment property. Especially in my area. I was looking at condos. Um, specifically because I wouldn't have to worry about anything structural. I just gotta worry about painting, carpet, you know what I'm saying? Like changing mm-hmm. out carpet. Condo, the condo association deals with anything with the building. Yeah. I just gotta worry about the room. So once I started digging into condos, you know, I checked out a couple. I went to Southeast DC. That was interesting. There was a rat in the kitchen, a dead rat in the Ugh. kitchen of the room. Uh Goodness that place gracious. was bad. But that's the whole point of in regards to real estate investment. You're looking for bad properties that you can add value to. Yeah. And and then um Boy, and then you can get bad. that. And then you get the equity. <laughs> no, it was bad. Yeah. It was rough. Um, what I and I also I think like a couple of days later I went to another condo in Silver Spring, and I felt like I went to a time machine. The carpet was like pissy yellow. It was like a piss color. Yeah, you show me but it pictures. wasn't. Nobody peed on it. It just looked it was like shag, right? It was a yeah. shag carpet, right? No, it wasn't shag. It wasn't shag. It was okay. just this yellow, this bright yellow, golden. It was a golden carpet. And it felt like I was in the Brady Bunch. Who decided that? I don't know. <laughs> but they were both crazy. like under um under value. And it was, you know, it was cool to go see them. But I I actually tried to uh put a property under contract, right? So I put okay. a property under contract, you're just saying like, yeah, uh in a couple months we're gonna close on it. So if it's under contract. They already decided we're gonna go with these people. Yeah, that don't mean you can't try to put in another bid, but they've already gone with these people, so yeah. you you might want to move on. Okay, I tried to put a contract in, but the only problem is when you when you put in a contract, you need to show a proof of funding, meaning mm. like, yeah, let them know you got to let them know you have money. <laughs> like, don't waste my time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, I was still working on that at the moment, but I was so hyped to like, I thought I was yeah. supposed to actually close in on my funding. I'm trying to get a line of credit, a home equity, a home equity line of credit from my house. So yeah, that's taking forever in a day. But oh, I was so like, nah. you got to be patient, huh? Yeah. It was one of those things where I was like, nah, I, I'll figure it out. But then yeah. I, was like, I actually do need to tell them like, I got, <laughs> I got money. And if I don't close, I don't really, I don't really yeah. got it. So, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm kind of stuck, but I'm also thinking, I'm also thinking like I'm not going to look at condos anymore, um, because the one condo had a condo fee for like three fifty a month. Mm-hmm. That's like a car payment. And another one, the other one I looked at that I was about to put on the contract, the condo fee was nine fifty a month. Jesus Christ! These niggas ain't even got a pool. <laughs> I said, what am I? What would I be paying for? What yeah? What are you? Is the area nice? Is it a nice area? Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Silver Spring, uh, it's a decent, it's a decent mm. area, uh, close to College Park, uh, it's out there in Montgomery County. Yeah, they got money out there. Um, but yeah, no, I was like, I'm not paying. You know, nine fifty is crazy. You know how much yeah. that's gonna take out of my check? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I think I'm gonna switch up, and I, I really think I'm gonna dedicate myself to like studying Baltimore, looking in that area a little more. And okay. uh, we'll go from there, but that's cool, that's literally cool. what I've been up to these last couple of days. Cool, it's cool, been a, cool. it's been a lot. It's been stressful, not stressful cool. like 
too stressful, but I just okay, been studying. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. Yeah. That's my life. That's dope. That's dope, man. That's dope. I'm gonna get one. I, I'm. I, I really hope by August, I've. Yeah. I've. I'm looking for renters. I'm hoping by August, I'm looking for renters. That's okay. the goal. Okay. All right, where? That's dope. All right. I have some property. I know. Enough yeah. now. Switching from real life business to TV business. This episode is brought to you by Canva. Canva is a graphic design platform used to create social media graphics, presentations, posters, documents, and other visual content. The app includes templates for users to use to design whatever they want for the free. The platform is free and free to use, but also offers a paid subscription, Canva Pro, which will unlock an even larger library of graphics, images, templates, and videos to add to your designs. So please tap the link in the description and get started. Let's go to Succession. Episode Uh, 7. Episode 7, The Twists and Turns. The Shiv and Tom episode. That's what I called it. That was a great argument at the end. That was a five minute argument. They argued for five minutes straight. I know we talked about this before. I but I feel like uh what the nigga name? All right, Shit. so let me before we Hold before on. before 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 let's let's break down what happened in the episode before we start. All right. All right. So this week in the episode is the day before election day. And Tom and Shiv are hosting the tailgate party. I didn't know they tailgated for elections. So they're hosting the tailgate party. So they're having everyone come over. And Shiv's playing both sides with her brothers. Yeah, she called Roman and Ken while she's also teamed up with Madsen. So every time Roman and Ken are trying to find out a way to undercut Madsen, she tells Madsen. So their plan is to go regulatory. Which means they're trying to get the politicians to be like, oh, they're trying to pull a Facebook thing. I think that's what I got from it. Like they're trying to get them in trouble, trying to get his business in trouble with the government, like Facebook did, had to go yes. to do the hearings yes. and stuff. That's a good idea. So that's, that's a good. Uh, that's the plan comparison. they're trying to go with. So shit's going down. Mass is still trying, still about to buy the company. This deal's taking forever to go through. It's been seven episodes. I thought the deal would be gone through by now. This I am like, I I don't know. If this is how this works. I mean, it is one hundred and ninety-two billion dollars, but like, shit, what the fuck? I thought the deal was cut and done. Uh, so the, they're at the party, and every, the thing about Succession, they always have a party, and shit always goes down at these parties. So shit's going back and forth. And Matt and she's like, "Hey, you actually have to show up to this party, the Mattson, because Mattson wasn't gonna come, because the plan was to bring Shiv's ex in, who works for one of the presidential candidates, and get in his ear about Mattson being bad for the deal, and just to just to fuck him over, go the regulatory route, which I still don't really know what that meant. No idea. But that's the premise of the episode today that we just went through." Now, Tyler, proceed. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a lot going on. It's Greg, right? Not Greg. What's the, what's the name? Cousin Who's Greg's the tall one. Shit's husband's, husband's Tom. 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 So we got to understand, right, the history of the regulatory nigga. Matt and Tom. No, not Matt. That's the nigga Nate. they invited. Nate. Yeah, Nate. Nate and Shiv got busy the day before her wedding. Nate and Shiv, Shiv was cheating on Tom the whole time in season yeah, one. Yeah, Shiv was cheating on Tom with Nate. with Nate. And they were co-workers. So or they were both little, in politics together back in the day. Yeah. Some so bad it's ironic. It's ironic that he come back for the final season. But that was I, like. I think I think everyone's getting their last. Who's everyone in the show? They get in their last moments. Before yeah. The show so that moves. was like. That was that was the, the fire starter for Tom, I yeah. feel like. Just him I, being there was like itchy. I'm sure yeah, he was just itchy. The, the episode started in a, in a good place, which is crazy. Yes. I mean, he gave he her a terrible gift, gift well, he which was low key a girls. dig. Yeah. I once that I knew once that gift was given, I was like, oh, he's calling her a scorpion. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm not educated enough. <laughs> Why was that a ditch? Because scorpions bite and sting gotcha. you. 
a gotcha. scorpion is going to sting you. You can't play with a scorpion. Yes. It's going to sting you like Shiv. Because she, yeah, she don't play no games. She's got poison. She's uh, like venom. So, Tom's already like, nah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She waited and... to tell him, too, because the brothers came to her and was like, oh, we got to bring in Nate to co- go this regulatory route. Yeah. And she's like, Nate, to my house? Yeah, that's wild. Where I live with my husband to our party that we're hosting. And instead of telling him, she uh just text him dirty. Hey, by the way, if a nigga tell you he going to bed, let that nigga go to bed. Yeah, he was tired. Like, I just he, don't understand. But you know why he's tired, though, right? He been having so much sex. Yeah, they been having so much sex, he ain't been getting no sleep. He ain't getting no sleep. <laughs> he just, he's tired for fucking his wife all night. <laughs> and she don't want to let him go to bed. She but a lot stay of stuff goes me. down this episode. Man said my sure. eyes feel like sandbags. Yeah. I'm trying, look. I'll bet you if he wasn't tired, that argument wouldn't have happened. I think it still would have happened because, so at the party now, they're at the party started. I ain't explained none of that. Shiv, Shiv, uh, I'm treating it like the NC movie show, you feel me? So Shiv, Shiv tells Tom when the party starts, instead of telling him early in the day that Nate's coming through. So he's already on edge. Like He didn't get no time to think about this, calm down a little bit. He's already tight. He's yeah. already tight. You know what I'm saying? And they they comes through. They have a very awkward interaction with Tom and uh Nate. He uh he basically like he's a fucking asshole. Like he coming Pretty to my much. house. Yeah, essentially. That's one of those it's one of those conversations. And the brothers are like trying to like get Nate get in his ear and like Nate's getting uncomfortable because he's like there's other political figures there who if they see him who's a Democrat talking with the, the niggas that own basically Fox News of this world, someone's gonna say something. It's not gonna look good, you know. Yeah. So they're 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 basically trying to get angles to get Matson out because they're trying to blow up this deal, and Matson shows up, and then the with brother the gold, starts spinning jacket, with the gold lie. chain, with the crew talking shit while they're having a moment of silence for the father. Mad disrespectful, but how are they supposed to know that? They didn't care. But this this party, I love one thing I love about Secession is it really when when they have these parties, it really feel like it's a real life party because you be at a party, mad shit be going on, conversations yeah. and stuff, and like low key deals, and it's like very interesting to see. I will say this um, one thing: when that Swedish nigga spit in Greg's face, yo, when he blew the smoke in his face, everything out of slap. Whoa, I would have swung living life out of that nigga. I don't give a fuck if he's from Sweden. I don't care if he thinks he's a Viking. I I'm taking my that, chances. I'd I'm whoop taking, that I'm, white boy's I'm, ass up and down dog. that room. I'd fight to the death. Even I don't if have I'm losing, enough. I fight to the death. I don't have enough patience. He can knock me down, and I'm gonna get up every time. Yeah, he, we, we we rolling around on that ground. You don't have to carry me out that building. But it's just like no it way. showed, it like you. It just like in the beginning of the party, you've seen how much power like Madsen had over them. Yeah. And that, but you're also seeing how much Madsen actually isn't that great. Like the way he's treating his, uh, his head of communications, who he's been sending blood to. And basically, he's low key sexually assault. He's sexually harassing this woman at this point because they had a relationship. He's keeping her around. She's obviously uncomfortable, doesn't want to be there no more. And he's just digging at her, jabbing at her, jabbing at her, jabbing at her. And this is what opens up the doors for Kendall and Roman to blow up this deal because she starts spilling the beans. I think what's interesting is Shiv always thinks she's doing the right thing. Shiv always thinks she's doing the right thing. And she's like, oh, I'm all in on Madsen. Every move she's made... It was backfired. Yeah. Every move. From beginning to end. Every move. And she gets a little bit too cocky. And it's like, even, just, she didn't have to tell Madison about Nate coming to the party. She didn't. She could have kept but her he, mouth shut. Because Madison is a, uh, uh, what do you call him? You don't know what you're going to get. 
He don't. He's unpredictable. You bring him to a party? Yeah, he's unpredictable. You can't bring an unpredictable person to a party like that. No. Not a not, not network. Her telling him to come to the party is low-key the downfall of her plan. Yeah. Because if they he didn't come to that party and keep jabbing at his uh, uh, his head of communications, I think her name is Ebba, she yep. would never spilt the beans about the numbers in India being false. Exactly. They're like, the numbers is like, you know, if there was two Indias. <laughs> So exactly. that means to get the to tell the board that hey they're they're inflating numbers they're, these numbers ain't real that could get the deal shut down immediately. Shiv didn't know doesn't know this at the time. You know nobody actually knows. So this this whole thing is just fucking up. And she, what she's doing the whole party is walking around with Madsen, basically having him talk to all these different people because I guess it's like they said it was a room of 40 important people but I see Most what she was trying people. to do though and I but see she's that taking she was jabs at her, her husband this is what yeah. I think this this is the tired thing but on top of that she's basically going around the whole party joking about her husband's gonna get fired yes and that's not cool man you don't do I don't care if it's a joke on top like, of the was, divorce joke yeah on top of the divorce yeah. divorce joke the divorce joke from Madison was wild yeah and then you and then, like, you see, like, Tom trying to be getting cool with Madison, and like, you can tell it's awkward, you can tell it's forced, and he's like, "Yeah, he's, he's just trying to suck my dick," and like, it's just like, it's just, it's like she's not defending this man who's supposed yeah. to be her husband, the father of her child, that he doesn't know of. that he didn't know about. That's why when we get to this, when the, this argument at the end, when the man said, "I want to go to bed," she should just let him go to bed because basically they ain't getting back together at this argument. And they say you would not be a good mother. He said you're he's like he was like, You're taking these jabs at me, but no matter what, at the end of the day, you're still gonna be good. Yeah. If I don't have a job, I'm not good. You're fucking with my money. And he literally just said last episode, I love money. Yep. So like they was going back and forth. This was a this is one of those conversations I like you felt like this argument, you felt like if you seen this argument going down in real life, you'd be like, ooh, let me get out of this room. That's how I felt the whole time it was going on. I was like. <laughs> hold on, like, hold on, man. Legendary moment here. Ma, I'm on the podcast. I'm going to hit you all later. Okay, I need to talk to Dean. Is she upstairs? <laughs> yeah, give her a call. <laughs> She don't, don't even want to talk to you. She don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> she, she, should I check on my wife? Nah, she be straight. She be straight. <laughs> but yeah, like this argument, like just like exploded. Like all these feelings that they they finally. This is the first time I think they'll ever honest with each other. Yeah, man. I feel bad for Tom. Been real bad for Tom. I went from not liking Tom to film. Oh, this is what I wanted to say about that argument. I just feel like we need a reference back to that moment when she was talking about that nigga um, in season in season five. I just really wanted him to like quote what she said to him word for word. Oh, in the last season, yeah. When she said she don't love him, yeah. I feel like we needed that moment, and he never really. But he's like he's too good of a person. To do something like that, I mean, but there's no way that 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 moment is not ingrained in his head. He said, "You are an unfit to you were you can you are unfit to be a mother." He they they was going they was throwing some fuck. He was he won that argument no matter. Oh what. yeah, he took the biggest he, jab at her. It, he took the biggest jab. At her. That's a haymaker. He got, like you know how you know he won that argument because she literally went from she didn't have nothing. All she said, "I don't care about you." Never yep. did. That's how you know what argument. She ain't got nothing to say. No but yeah, this is another good episode, man. We got three more left. Next week's the election. Apparently, the episode eight is going to be the episode that everyone's going to be like, ah. We didn't talk about Connor. They were trying to get Connor to drop out the race because they want, uh, I forgot the name of the guy they want to win the presidency. Yeah. But they want Connor to drop out and support him so his 4% can uh go towards that guy so he can win. And they're like basically they're like 
hey, if you endorse them, we'll get you an ambassador seat in some country. But not even a good country. Some random ass countries that nobody it's really cares cold. about. And he I had, like that he's taking a stance. Yes. This whole season he's been taking, he's been he's been uh getting dubs. He's been and telling about that themselves he, all season. It's good that he um he got somebody riding with him. He got he had the coldest line of uh the episode. Yeah. He said, Nah, I'm good. You know what? The only person here who actually cares about me says we shouldn't do it, so that's who I'm gonna listen to. Yeah. And he He's like you like he was like y'all literally just said I'm not good like you you don't believe me you think I'm fucking an idiot you think I'm a fool. And he's like the only person that actually does respect me here says we shouldn't do it so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go home. Fuck you guys. And I was like that's right Connor. That's right. That man's too nice of a person to be treated the way he's treated. Yeah. Like I was like hey he I feel like Connor's going to end up president of the United States. <laughs> I feel like that's the twist about next week. Like they feel like he's gonna uh, some Donald Trump shit. He gonna end up winning <laughs> the presidency, and it's gonna be hilarious. That would be absolutely wild. But that I can see. I wild. mean, it doesn't seem yeah. realistic for the show. It doesn't seem I, realistic because he got four. He's, he's the election 4%. days the next day is four percent of the polls. So like that don't mean he gonna, yeah he not gonna win a damn thing. But imagine, <laughs> imagine the upset. They couldn't even give this nigga oh, like man. a good ambassador seat. No, nah, that's cold. That's like they couldn't even give a South Korea. <laughs> like, like we can't have you next to the nukes. Why? I, I don't. Why would I want to be in a country that doesn't have any nukes? <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> well, yeah, this show's hilarious. All right, we had an hour and a half. Yeah, we are. All right, Do let you me get talk, this review. Let's talk Guardian. Let's yeah, talk Guardians. Nerd. Corner. Let's go. Guardians of the Galaxy. What did you yes. think? All right. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. <sighs> I, I'm speechless, bro. That shit was perfect. It will, I'm going to give my rated right now. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I got to see it again, but it's a 10 out of 10 so far. This, I think this is what the MCU needed after Ant-Man. Because after Ant-Man, people were out. Black Pit, not Wakanda Forever couldn't even save the MCU after Ant Man. They was out on it, and this movie right here was—it was literally the perfect way to end the trilogy. It's coming out that people are saying the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy is compared comparable to the Dark Knight trilogy. They're saying it's the best comic book trilogy of all time after this movie. I'm not gonna spoil anything because Tyler hasn't seen it, and. This is one of those movies where, like, if you spoil anything, it'll ruin the whole movie for you. But I think James Gunn done did it. He This is the perfect way to bow out. Now he's going to go on to take over the reins at DC. Yeah, if that's this is the, the um, shit that he's making, I can't wait for Superman because he's making the next Superman movie. That's what I read in the article that Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Volume 3 was a great promo promo for what DC will be doing yes, in the future. Exactly. As, and he's this br- is his last movie with Marvel. Yes. And the thing about James Gunn is he brings people with him. So he he brings people with him. So his brother was in the movie. His brother's been in every movie. The dude one of the so he made Peacemaker last year with John Cena. The main villain was a, was was in the Peacemaker show. A brother named uh, let me read. I had to write this name down. He's from Niger. He's a Nigerian man. His name is Chukwudi Uwiji. He played the high evolutionary. And let me tell you, bro, it was over the top. He was evil. He's literally. I honestly, I think he's gonna be the most. He's. You're gonna hate him. He's the most evil villain in all of Marvel, in my opinion, for the shit he does in this movie. Like you. Like, he was over the top. He was crazy. He was mad. He was evil. He was everything that, like, when you think of a villain, that's what he was. He was powerful. Like, he was he was pressing white niggas up against the wall with his powers and squeezing them and squeezing them. It was crazy. It was beautiful to see. Um, <laughs> hey, it, okay. he, he stole the show for me 
he stole the show for me. Um, every character got a great send off. This is That's good. this isn't the last Guardians of the Galaxy movie, but it felt like it was the last Guardians of the Galaxy movie. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. It was. I like how the stakes were low. The okay. stakes were low. It wasn't high stakes. It wasn't like they had to save the galaxy, save the universe. They would just had to save. They just had to save their friend. Hmm. They just had to save their friend, and it was just like that was the whole point. That was the whole driving force of the plot of the movie was like they just had to save their friend and make sure he was that that person was good. I'm not going to tell you who they got to save, who they had to save. Just know they had to save one of their friends. I am. Good. They get in the rocket story. Yeah, and um, that story is just heartbreaking and just like I love how they weaved it in between because the movie's two and a half hours, but it doesn't feel it because it's so quick pace. It has a uh-huh. very fast That's pace. It gets straight, it gets straight to the action. It's paced so well, like you don't even know that time's going. Yeah. And I love how they intertwine Rocket Story and bring it, slow it down a little bit. You got to sit in these moments when you see Rocket Story. And mm. it's just heartbreaking. It's if you don't shed a tear or think about crying when you see this little nigga story, you don't got a heart, bro. Man, you don't got a heart. And you know how people feel about animals. You don't got a heart. Um, all I gotta say is the end is is R I uh not R I P, but A. <laughs> Lila, Teeths, and Floor. They deserved better. So I got to say. Lila Teeth and Floyd, they deserved better. If they don't steal your heart, bro, I don't know what it is. And last thing, Adam Warlock. He was I right. I I don't like how they made him a he was like a butt the butt of every joke. Got you. But uh, cause I in the comics he's a bad motherfucker. Like he's a, he don't play. Like in the comics he's the one that beat Thanos. Oh, that's wow. how powerful he was. He's the one that was able to hold the Infinity Gauntlet and defeat Thanos. So like they kind of made a joke out of him. He was kind of the joke character. Um, but it was still good. I thought that was my only nitpick. Was like. I think they should have made had him a little bit more serious, but I understand why they made him a joke. The movie's a little bit more lighthearted. It gets real dark, though. This is the most violent movie, MCU movie. The dark, one of the darkest MCU movies, in my opinion. But it's still lighthearted. And they dropped the first ever F bomb. They say fuck for the first time in this movie, in any MCU movie in this one. And when it happens, when it happens, it's hilarious. <laughs> It's bad. Right, I gotta see it. I gotta see it. Maybe I can yeah. check it out. Check it out this week. If not, I'll, I'll definitely try to check yeah, it out. It was really good. Ten out of Soon. ten, bro. Ten out of ten. You heard it, people. Straight from the mouth, Jalen's nerd corner. <laughs> Adam, I hey, sped man. it up a little bit because it's time for time. Yeah. Since. Hey, we appreciate y'all tuning in. This was the No Clearance Podcast once again. Shout out to our patrons, man. Subscribe to the No Clearance Patreon at patreon.com slash no clearance. And uh, you know, check us out on Instagram. Underscore no clearance. TikTok. Are we underscore no clearance on TikTok? Well, there's no clearance on TikTok. No clearance on TikTok, y'all. All right. That's all for us. I'm Tyler the J. Shout out KC. She come back next week. Yes, okay. next week the return. The return of KC, man. Stay blessed. Stay black. Peace.